church today? Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. I was wondering where everyone was at first service. Now I know they all came to second service. Glory to God. That's good. We're going to get started and open up in a word of prayer. I'd like to ask everyone, if you would, please bow your heads and close your eyes. Oh, hallelujah. Father God, we begin to praise you. We begin to worship you. We begin to turn our hearts towards you today. Begin to turn our minds towards you. Begin to push off the things of this world as we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Fathers, we begin to come boldly to the throne of grace today that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need that the power of your Holy Spirit would begin to move in a supernatural way as we declare that we gather together in one spirit, in one accord, in the name of Jesus, inviting the power of your Holy Spirit to begin to come and have his way in the service today that your spirit would begin to search each and every heart and speak into each and every person the things that they have need of. For Father, you know every situation, every circumstance that each and every person is going through today. And Father, you know what word they need to hear. You know what song they need to hear. You know what prayer they need to hear. You know the voice that they need to hear is yours. And Father, as you begin to speak, as you begin to declare and proclaim your will, your purpose, and your plan for their lives, as you begin to impart into us a word of wisdom or knowledge or understanding as we seek after your face and the knowledge of your grace, as we're yielded vessels unto you, Father, begin to let your kingdom come and begin to let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven as we begin to worship you and we begin to praise you today. Father, we invite you to fill this sanctuary with the power of your Holy Spirit and bring a refreshing into our spirits. Bring a, a strengthening into our, our innermost being that we may be able to war off the attacks of the enemy and overcome this world by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Father God, you promised in your word where two or more are gathered in your name, there are you in the midst also. And Father, your word will not return into you void, but it will accomplish that in which you have set it out to do. And as we call into you, you promised you would answer and you would show us great and mighty things which we know not. And Father, right now we just take authority over this building. And in the name of Jesus, by the power of the blood of the Lamb, we bind the principalities and we bind the powers of darkness. We bind the rulers of the darkness of this world. We bind and cast down the spiritual wickedness in high places and render them harmless and ineffective against the people of God. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we just ask you to begin to loose your warring angels to encamp around about this building and to loose the power of your Holy Spirit to have his way. For we proclaim the blood, the blood of Jesus to remove all sin, the blood to remove all darkness, the blood to remove anything, Father, that would hinder us from hearing your voice and knowing your will. And today we'll be sure to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all that would agree would say amen, amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As we got people still coming in, I'm going to ask you all to please stand to your feet if you would. Yes, and please smile. Here we go. There we go. Now greet somebody around you that smile. Tell them God loves them. You love them. And you're glad they're in the house of the Lord today. Hallelujah. Sorry. Had an emergency. <laughs> I've been having a stomach pain in my ear. <laughs> Whoa, man. You didn't make it fast. Benediction. Yeah. I got a feeling. I got a feeling. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Everything's gonna be alright, be alright 
those who hadn't, you know, God is good.
price is paid through you there's victory through you my heart screams i am free sets free he whom the sun 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 sets free is free indeed is free indeed seated for a moment. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Do we have any first time visitors here at God Shine Life Church? Amen. Praise the Lord. We see those visitors. Glory to God. It is a blessing and an honor to have you here today. There is a card on the back of the chair that just like the ones they're holding up, if you would please fill that card out and place it in the offering basket here in a few moments. We would certainly appreciate it. Does not obligate you to anything. We will not show up at your house unannounced or anything like that. All it does is give us a record that you came to visit God's Shining Light Church. We want you to know God loves you. We love you. And we are blessed and honored to have you here. Can we give our visitors another round of applause, please? <laughs> Hallelujah. I have just a few announcements. Uh, number one is don't forget the women's breakfast in the month of December, but also the men's breakfast will be canceled, all right? Uh, we will not be having a men's breakfast in the month of December. Uh, also, I want to announce that on December the 22nd, we will be having our Wings of Freedom Angel Tree Party, uh, where we give out all the gifts to all the children that we take up funds for to bless with a blessed Christmas. Amen. And so, uh, please keep that in mind. Put that on your calendar. Also, there will not be a uh, priesthood 
motorcycle ministry meeting on the first Monday of the month in December. Uh, December we have our Christmas party and so that's uh, planned later on in the month. So we will not be having our regular priesthood meeting. Outside of that, I want to remind everyone about the devotions that we have out there. there. These will go really, really fast. This is, covers December, January, and February, and it is a good way to start your every day. You start a little devotion with God, you get your mind thinking about God, your heart thinking about God, and God begins to move into your life and your situation throughout your whole day. There's no better day than to begin your day with God. Amen? And so I want to encourage you to get those, and then also don't forget your mobile giving. If you have a uh, if you'd like to give through your mobile phone, uh, you can text a phone number that's on the card. Let me see if I can find it here. It is uh, 269-3885. Text your email address and your name, and you will be. we will get in touch with you to set you up for mobile giving. Amen? Uh, it's a good way to give. Outside of that, I don't think I have any other announcements. If you would, put your hands together and welcome Pastor Maurice for an offering message. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, church. How many got to see the sun come up? The ones that didn't hand put it up there. The sun is up. Good grief. What have we got going here? Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, a young man named Angeletto wears a sticker that says, I am wealthy because I tithe. If you compare him to world standards, you might not think he is wealthy. But not try to convince him of, of that. He has faithfully tithed since he was a little boy. Growing up in the Philippines, young, the young man began tithing from income. He, he received selling popsicles and cold water to passengers on a local train. He remembers placing 10% from every coin he earned and put it in an envelope and a, ca a calendar. He would then take his tithe and place it into the church's offering. He continued his commitment to tithing. As he grew up, he got married. He has a family. As a father, he taught his children the value of the tithing. Now, he's a pastor and teaches the same lessons to his congregation. Now, you can teach your family lessons about tithing the value of giving also and that's what we are to do is to raise children to tithe and i just thank the lord for that let's pray father thank you so very much for what you do and what what's going on father the blessings that you have given to us all this week on Thanksgiving and Lord we just we just it's it's our time now to turn around and bless you and to give our tithings and I know that you're going to multiply when it's in there you've got the you got it all placed out you know what you're going to do with it there's been a lot of people here has been has been helped through this thank you father for who you are and i thank you for who we are in jesus christ amen
but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. This my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Father, we exalt you and we thank you.
for the blood. The blood of Jesus that washes away all of our sin, that cleanses us from this world. Father, we receive that blood down upon every soul in the sound of my voice that the power of your Holy Spirit would have access into their lives, that the blood would redeem them, cleanse them, deliver them, make us whole and pure in your sight. Father, we thank you for today. And you see every heart, you see every life, you see what they have need of. And Father, we just invite your spirit to have his way. Begin to flow and allow your anointing to go forth. Speaking into each and every heart the things that they have need of. That you would bring a refreshing into their spirits. You would bring guidance and direction into our lives. That we would be yielded into your voice. Knowing your will, your purpose, and your plan. Father, we ask you as we enter into your word today. Have your way and speak into the hearts of your people. And Lord, apart from you, I can do nothing. But I yield into your spirit and ask you to allow your anointing to flow through my heart, through my mind, through the words of my mouth as I speak into the hearts of your people. And we'll be sure to give you all the glory for it's in Jesus' name we pray and all that would agree would say amen and amen. You may be seated. Glory to God. Would you all give Compelled to Christ a nice round of applause? Praise the Lord. I am. I thank God for them filling in today. Uh, Jim and Sheila actually went to Branson for the weekend uh, for the holiday. And so they will be back next week. And so uh, I thank God for Compelled to Christ to fill in and to lead us in worship. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. So y'all give them another round of applause. All right. There we go. We're going to get into the word today. It's a blessing to see everybody here today. My God, there's a good crowd. Uh, we love to see all the faces, the good-looking ones, <laughs> and the bad-looking ones. Hey, man, we, we even see them on the back row. That's good. Praise the Lord. My eyes are good. I still got pretty good eyes for being my age. Praise God. And I thank God that I can see people. It, it blesses me. Amen. And we're so glad that you're here. If you're visiting with us for the first time, I encourage you to come back and visit with us for about two or three times. And that way you'll know that you know that you know this is where God wants you to be. My only desire is to be a pastor is to help you find the will of God and fulfill the will of God in your life. And that's our purpose here. Uh, to, that you may come and hear a word. Hear a, a word of wisdom or, or counsel. A word of guidance or direction. Only God knows what you're going through. And it's my job to try and speak into your heart his will, his purpose, and his plans. I lift up Jesus. The Bible says he'll draw all people into him. Amen? Amen. And so that's my desire. And this week as we continue in the word, we, we've been talking last week about Thanksgiving because of the holidays. And, and this week, you know, this next 30 days, we're flowing into the holidays. And, you know, we start off by being thankful. And last week we began to embrace really what happens whenever we begin to be thankful. It's not so much that God needs our thankfulness. It's so much that we need to have an attitude of gratitude. It's so much as we begin to be thankful for where we're at and what's going on in our lives that God can begin to move in a mighty way and show himself strong. We have to realize that when we're thankful, it gives us an opportunity for God to begin to put us in a position that we may be able to receive from him and be able to set ourselves up to be used by him. Because that's his will. You know, many of us in this room, we have a lot of messes. Amen. Amen. But the reality is, is that God wants to take our mess and turn it into a message. Yeah. So that he can use us for his glory. And when we begin to be thankful, as the Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 5, you know, when he wrote that, he had no reason to be thankful. If you look at it from a man's point of view, if you look at it from a flesh point of view, he had no reason to be thankful. He was chained to a Roman soldier. He was in the dungeons of Rome waiting to see the king uh, during that day, waiting really to begin to start the execution that he, had, that he was declared he was going to have to go through. And the reality of it was he began to thank God in everything 
But see, we have to understand when we begin to thank God, what does it do for us? What does it do in us? What does it do through us? And when we begin to recognize that as we did last week, it begins to empower us to receive from God. It begins to set us up and put us in a place that God can use us, guide us, and direct us to be used by him. But without that thankfulness, what happens? We start complaining. We start murmuring. We start feeling sorry. We start being oppressed. We start being depressed. And, and I want you to know it's not easy sometimes in the midst of the storm to be thankful. But it's not the point that we're thankful for the storm. We're thankful for the God who's going to take us through the storm. Because it's his will not to leave us there. It's his will to take us through. And when we realize it, that through thanksgiving, through having an attitude of gratitude, that it opens up our hearts and opens up our lives so that God can begin to bring healing, can begin to bring deliverance, can begin to move in our lives in a supernatural way. But sometimes we're not thankful. And then what happens? God begins to move out of our life. And it's not that he begins to move. It's just that we stop letting him in. You know, it's not his will that we suffer or hurt or have pain. But yet sometimes whenever we remove ourselves from God, we set ourselves up to have that pain and that hurt. See, I want you to understand that giving thanks helps bring protection. As we looked at it last week in the book of Daniel chapter 6, when Daniel was facing the lion's den, when Daniel was getting ready to be put into a lion's den, the Bible says in Daniel 6 that he began to give God thanks. But it wasn't that he'd be in the lion's den. It was that God would take him through the lion's den. If you really go back and study the entire chapter of, of Daniel chapter 6, what happened is that Daniel was, the, 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 the king's men were jealous of Daniel and they wanted the king to kill Daniel and Daniel had favor with the king. And even the king himself went and prayed and fasted after he put Daniel in the lion's den. I mean, imagine that. And yet the lions, they kept their mouth shut. Ain't y'all find yourselves in a den of lions during the holidays? Yeah. <laughs> Did you keep your mouth shut? No, I'm just kidding. Okay, we got, we got to learn this really quick, okay? No, you are to be the light of the world. You're to be the salt of the earth. And sometimes you have to confront things. But the reality is, is when the Spirit of God's flowing through you and you're thankful for what you got, it sets you up to have that relationship with others that you normally wouldn't have. Yeah. Not only that, they see the light inside you. They see the Spirit of Christ inside you. And there's something about when people see the Spirit of Christ in you, it draws them unto God. It draws them. Like, where did you get that? What do you got? How come you're smiling? Why are you so happy? Why do you got peace? Why do you got joy? What, what, what empowers you? What, what, what do you got that I don't got? I mean, back in the day, whenever I was slinging dope, everyone called me and said, hey, you got any good stuff? Now they call me, I got the best stuff. It's called the Most High. Okay, it's called the Spirit of God. It's called the Spirit of God. And you got to begin to stir it up inside you. And you got to begin to see the joy of God as your strength. All right? And, and, but it begins with being thankful. Have you ever been around a negative person? Y'all ain't been hanging out with each other, have you? How we cannot stand to be around that negativity. But man, when you get around somebody that's grateful, that gives thanks unto God, it begins to move in their life. And see, I want to encourage you this week and actually throughout the whole month of December to begin to be thankful. Now, I, have, I was speaking to a person the other day and she was talking about how during the holidays she becomes depressed. She becomes oppressed. She gets to thinking of the loved ones she's lost. She gets to thinking of the situations and the circumstances in her life. And what happens? Because she gets to dwelling on the negative, it begins to pull her down. Okay? It begins to rob her of the blessing of the holidays. Okay? Now, I believe the holidays are ordained by God. Okay? Now, I'll talk about that here in a moment. But, 
The reality of it is, is if you keep focusing on the holidays as negative, then negative will be produced in your life. You sometimes have to begin to make the choice to change your emotions and change your feelings by fighting back and choosing to rejoice no matter what's going on on the inside of you. And as you begin to choose to rejoice, your feelings will change. So you say, Pastor, you don't know my feelings. I know the God of your feelings. Okay? And I know he created you to have emotion, but here's the key. Is your emotions controlling you or are you controlling your emotions? And you say, well, how can I control my emotions? Many of you control your emotions every Sunday when you come to church. That's right. Amen. You stop thinking. Some of you had to fight to get here this morning. I didn't want to come, but I guess I did. Some of you had to overcome obstacles. Some of you couldn't wait to get to church. Man, that's like, whoa, let's get to go to church today, all right? Yeah, some of you. But see, the others, you, you had emotions that you had to begin to fight. You had to begin to overcome. And those feelings on the inside, we all have feelings. But the key that we have to learn is how to change those feelings. And it happens when you come to church. Some of you came here, but you will leave better than what you came. Amen. You will feel better. It's like when you hit the parking, parking lot on your leaving, you're like, man, that felt pretty good. Because you got yourself in an atmosphere. You got yourself in a place where we was worshiping God. We was glorifying God. We was lifting up the Spirit of God. And when you lift up the Spirit of God, the Spirit of life begins to be poured inside you. And you begin to transform your feelings and emotions. Now, some of you that hold your arms and... I know I, everyone just did their arms like that. When you hold your arms like this and you refuse to change. Well, some of you got to be force fed. I, I know. I know. Everyone changed their arms. Let's go like this. Okay. Exercise. Here we go. Calisthenics. Okay. Yeah, praise the Lord. Some of you got to be force fed. Don't hit your wife. <laughs> I will have to lay hands on you suddenly. <laughs> now some of you have to be forced to change your emotions and, and the way you do it is you begin to worship God you begin to glorify God you begin to praise God and when you begin when you choose to do that see your feelings won't change until you choose to change them I, I believe this with all my heart you can take a man or a woman you can place them in a 20 by 20 cell or room and you can try and force them to change. But no matter what you do on the outside, that person's not going to change until they choose to do it on the inside. Hello. There is no rehabilitation in prison unless you choose to rehabilitate in prison. There's no rehabilitation in drug treatment unless you choose... To change while in treatment. Okay. The same thing in your home. The same thing in your house. There is nothing going to change until you choose to change it. Now, here's, here's the sad thing. Some of you, okay, I'll choose to change it. And then you go home. And for ladies, it's a little bit different than the men. Because the men, it doesn't matter. But the ladies, their home is their paradise. Their palace. And if it's messy, they're all upset. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. If, they, if their house is there, especially if they got company coming over, oh, yeah. men, it doesn't matter what you do. You're not going to change the way they're feeling right now <laughs> until they start cleaning. Now, the best thing you can do, men, is go buy some cleaning supplies. <laughs> Help them out, right? <laughs> This is good. This is good. I can see right now fighting happening. <laughs> I can see the men bringing in the cleaning supplies, setting them down, and the woman turning and looking and saying, that's all you're going to do? <laughs> My reply is, yes, dear. What else would you have me to do? <laughs> but here's the reality. 
If your house is bringing an oppression to you, you have to choose to do something to change the oppression. And until you start changing the oppression, it's going to continue to oppress you. No matter what, if you've got issues or problems in your life, until you choose to change those issues or problems, it's going to still affect you and cause oppression in your life. It's either going to cause oppression or depression. Some people say, well, what's the difference in depression and oppression? Depression comes from within. Oppression comes from without. You have to learn to change both sides. Amen? Amen. Well, one way to change is by being grateful. By giving thanks and all thanks. The Apostle Paul had no reason to give thanks in Ephesians chapter 5, but he did. And actually, I want to reread that because we did that last week, but I want to go back over that just real quick. Ephesians chapter 5, beginning at verse 19. Bill, had to see who was up there. Bill. <laughs> Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns. Now, here we go. The first thing you got to do is start speaking to yourself. There's nothing wrong with speaking to yourself as long as it's based on the Word of God. Do you realize that you're speaking to yourself whether you realize it or not? Amen. Yes. We go throughout our days. We start speaking to ourselves the moment we wake up. My question is, is what are you saying to yourself? Yeah, some of you are saying wake up. But the reality is, is you're speaking to yourself. What, what are you speaking? You might want to examine that if you're really dealing with oppression or depression. Okay? Now, some of you say, well, I've lost my loved ones, and I, I, I'm, I, I'm sorrowful because they're not here for the holidays. And you know what? I thoroughly can understand that. But let me ask you this. Do you feel your loved ones would want you to be full of grief and sorrow through the holidays? They wouldn't, would they? Actually, if some of our relatives could come back on this side, they would probably slap us for some of the things that we're doing. <laughs> Come on, otherwise you're staying in the doom and the gloom. You're staying in the destruction. You're staying in the madness. And your relatives didn't ask you to do that. Oh, but I miss them. Well, they're in glory. Amen. And it's okay to miss them if you must miss them for a moment. But by all means, remember the joys that you had with them. Stir up the good times that you had with them. And begin to overcome the darkness with the good things. Okay. Otherwise, you stay in that, oh, I miss mom. I miss mom, too. Mom passed away many years ago. But mom is in heaven today. And here I am. I get to enjoy our holidays with my family. Amen. You say, well, I don't have family. You got us. Amen. Okay? You got family. Some of you choose not to have family because you've been hurt by family. Some of you choose to be alone and then complain about it. <laughs> Golly, who am I talking to today? <laughs> yeah, the reality is you choose to be by yourself because you don't want to be hurt by anybody. But then after you find yourself by yourself, then you start complaining because you're all alone. Nobody loves me. Everyone hates me. I'm just going to go eat worms. <laughs> I mean, you see what I'm saying? We get into that mode. We get into that, that rut is what I call it. And when we should begin to speak to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our heart to the Lord. In verse uh, 20, giving thanks always for all things and to God, the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks always. Now, you know, the reality is, is when we learn to give thanks, giving thanks will bring protection. Giving thanks will bring direction. Giving thanks will bring contentment. But not only that, giving thanks will also bring increase into our lives. See, when we give thanks, it begins to set us up to where we can receive more. See, and, and, and let me say this, God's not afraid for you to have increase. He's just afraid for increase to have you. See, that's why we got to remain thankful because if we get our money or we get our minds off of thankfulness and get our minds on our money, then all of a sudden money has us instead of us having money. He wants us to rule our lives instead of our lives ruling us. Does that make sense to anybody? So see, that you got to remain grateful. Amen. Everyone say amen. amen. Give thanks. Everyone say give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. In everything. In everything. 
Boy, that's a good thing some of you said that. Some of you didn't change nothing on your face. I mean, I look at people all the time. I can tell when some people are listening, some people are really enthused, they like it, and they're, they're, they're like, yeah, give thanks, give thanks. And others, give thanks. <laughs> give thanks. There's a difference. When you give thanks, you should enlighten your life. You should, you should be blessed, amen? amen? Well, you know, as, as we get into the sermon today, I want to talk about God's plan, okay? God's plan. See, I, I said a while ago that the holidays were chosen by God. I believe that they are a gift from God, all right? Some people, and, and there are some people, every year I always get into this argument. Well, you know Christmas is a pagan holiday. No, it's not. Well, it was created as a pagan holiday. Yes, it was. But it's not my pagan holiday. Okay? I don't choose to worship the winter day, okay, the darkest day of the year. No, if you go back and study Christmas, you'll go back and realize that there was a day that all the pagans celebrate a, 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 a day, okay? But then you also have all the Christians that celebrate a day. And what the king did in that day, in my opinion, the king being God, is that he had the Christian holiday overcome the pagan holiday so that every year, no matter what was going on in the world today, in 2017, he could remind the entire world that the birth of his son was through a virgin birth. See, you're not getting it. See, the plan of God was to overcome the pagan holiday, not to allow the pagan holiday to overcome the Christian holiday. I mean, what would have happened if they would have stopped celebrating Christmas a hundred years ago? See, I believe, and this is just my belief, my opinion. I, see, I don't worship a Christmas tree. I may have a Christmas tree, but I don't bow down and say, Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. <laughs> I don't, but I've had people attack me because I have a Christmas tree. Well, be believe me, I'm not worshiping a Christmas tree. I'm worshiping my Father in heaven who gave me a Savior. Now, there's two things as Christians we always have to recognize and acknowledge. Number one is the birth of our Savior. Without the virgin birth, without the spotless lamb, without the sacrifice that he gave on the cross, he was sinless, but he became sin for us that we could be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Without that virgin birth, we have no salvation. And the world wants to take that from us. If they could get us to stop recognizing it, they would. But I believe in the infinite power of Almighty God. If you look, Christmas is recognized throughout the whole world. Amen. Now those that are atheists get mad about it. I would make a comment, but I better be careful with that one. There may be atheists around. Man, y'all are fighters, man. You're like, what do you mean? Yeah, let's just get in their face. So. <laughs> God, what are you doing, God? It's the army of God. I mean, you know, it's like the atheists who... Hey, man, it's, it's like the atheist who got upset because the Christians had a holiday, so he filed a lawsuit against the state because the, the atheist didn't have a holiday. Oh, well. Well, no, you got to understand. He went before the judge, and, or he was in the courtroom, and all of a sudden the judge stood up and said, I dismiss this case. And the atheist said, why are you dismissing this case? We don't have a holiday to serve or to, to, to rejoice in. And the judge says, yes, you do. And the atheist says, no, we don't. And the judge says, yes, you do. It's April 1st. <laughs> in his heart there is no God there's a God <laughs> I hope none of y'all get in a fight over that one 
I, I thought it was pretty good too, yeah. But see, we, we got to recognize God in his infinite wisdom had a plan. It's not like God just started doing this yesterday. If you go back to Genesis in chapter 3, when, when Adam and Eve fell, God began that day to put his plan into motion. Whenever Adam and Eve fell, God told the serpent in Genesis 3.15, Bill, if you'll put that up there for a moment. In Genesis 3.15, he told the, the woman, there it is, and I will put enmity between you and the woman. He's talking to the serpent. And between your seed and her seed. And this was the beginning of the plan. It shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. What's he talking about? Christ. Whenever Jesus went to the cross, he bruised the head of Satan. Satan bruised his heel. Now I don't know about you, there's a big difference in the head and the heel. And you ever been in a good fight, you know what I'm talking about. Y'all are fighters. That's the best way to get to y'all. <laughs> but see, the reality is, is that we won because Christ bruised his head. Now, granted, there for a moment, it looked like the devil won. But see, this was the beginning of God's plan. And when you take this, the Father's plan, and you begin to implement the Father's plan, he created the heavens, the earth, the seas, and all that's in them. There's nothing impossible with him. And in his infinite wisdom, he began through the process of time, weaving his way throughout the earth to bring about his plan. If you look from Genesis to Malachi, it was God coming down onto our level, coming down to the place that he could get through to us and showing us that we needed a savior. We needed help in order to be restored and to be redeemed back into God. Without a Savior, we cannot really live for God in the fullness of what he wants us to live for. And you, you stop and you look at some of the stories in the Old Testament, even through the mess, even through the madness, the chaos, the destruction of this world, even through the curse that's upon this earth, God still began to bring about his plan in all things. You look at Noah, whenever he began with Noah, and he just said, hey, the water's going to cover the earth, and I'm going to destroy everything but Noah and his family and the animals. And he did. It was an amazing plan. Moses, I mean, not, not Moses, Noah spent 120 years working on that. And I just realized recently in a devotion that I read that actually Noah probably had to plant the trees and grow the trees to cut them up to build the ark with. And I thought to myself, really? We never thought about that. Well, it took him 120 years. I, I know somebody would say, well, he was just cutting trees down. I think the trees had to grow first. And all through Noah's life, he had a plan. Abraham. Abraham was another one. All through Abraham's life, he had a plan. It didn't mean Abraham was perfect. It just means that even through the midst of Abraham's mess, he still worked his plan. He brought about Isaac. He brought about Jacob. Jacob, you talk about a mess. Jacob was a mess. Deceiver, manipulator. I know we don't have any of those around here. A person... And, and I call Jacob a master manipulator. Now I've had people get upset at me, at, at me because I've called our people master manipulator. I'm so glad some people saw the light. I've had some people say, you call me a master manipulator? Yeah. Why you call me that? Because you do whatever you can do to get your way. I'm so glad I got one person there. I do. I do. Did you ever stop to think about we ought to master manipulate to get God's will? Amen. Amen. Because it's not about us. It's about him. It's about his power and his ability working in us. But, and there's nothing wrong. But Jacob was a master manipulator. And I say Jacob was. Actually, it was Jacob's mama that started the whole thing. I know, I don't want to talk about mamas. We love mamas. Okay. <laughs> but, but she helped Jacob to see her, her, his father to get the blessing. All right? And then he became the father of 12 tribes. 
God had a plan. I really think there's a few times I thought God really messed it up. But then he brought about Joseph. And Joseph was the innocent one, right? Was he? I think he was a master manipulator too. Because he had a dream. And he went telling everybody about his dream. You're going to bow down to me. Yeah, right, Joseph. Yeah, that's like someone coming up to you and saying, you're going to bow down to me. What does that do to some of you? <laughs> that ain't going to happen. I can see three or four faces right across. That ain't happening. <laughs> well, that's what Joseph's family did to him. His brothers. If it wouldn't have been for Reuben, they would have killed Joseph. Because Judah wanted to kill him. I mean, he's a snitch. He told on us to daddy. If you go back and read the story of Joseph, see, that's, that's the plan of God, though. But yet God intervened at the right time in the right place to do the right thing to bring about his plan in the earth. Oh, God, look at that. Look at your life. The plan of God in your life. Oh, my God. I mean, if it would have been me, I would have... I would have chosen a different plan for me. <laughs> yeah, you tell me you wouldn't. You you tell me you wouldn't have chosen a different plan for your life. I mean, like, really? Yeah. So, but let me ask you this: through the midst of it, of your life, just like throughout the Old Testament, God bringing about His will. And you know, after Joseph came Moses. Moses, they went against the laws of the land just for Moses to live because the king Pharaoh said all male boys that are born in Israel should be killed. But yet Moses' mama seen something special in, mama, in Moses, just like every mama sees in every baby. No offense, I've seen some babies, they just didn't look like... <laughs> Okay, but, but you know what I'm talking about. I mean, there are some babies that are pretty beautiful little babies. Now, all babies are innocent and pure and loving, and I understand that. But I've seen some babies, I'm like, golly. <laughs> oh, ain't right, ain't right. I can only imagine the way some of y'all looked when you was babies. <laughs> I had one son, he had a big head. It took him years to grow into his head. <laughs> hey man, you know what I'm talking about? Lighten up on me a little bit. Some of y'all looking really serious, like mad at me. Don't look mad at me, I'm just being honest. <laughs> But even through that, God worked through Moses to bring about his plan. Moses even committed a murder. Moses wasn't perfect. Moses was chosen. Just like you're chosen by God. You say, what makes me chosen? You've received the sacrifice. When you receive the sacrifice, he has a divine destiny. He has a divine plan for you. He has a divine purpose for you. When you find out who you are in Christ, you begin to fulfill your purpose on earth. Amen. But you have to find who you are in Christ. Now, throughout the Old Testament, Moses came along. Moses parted, or God used Moses to help part the Red Sea. God used Moses to help bring the children of Israel out of Egypt and clear up into the wilderness. And then here comes Joshua, takes them on into the promised land. But I want you to see God's plan. Even in the midst of darkness, even in the midst of the curse of this world, throughout the last 6,000 years, God had a plan. Now, in that, you come all the way up from Genesis to Malachi, then the Christmas story begins. Great. Truth come about. Mercy and love begins to be poured out. You got to understand, the purpose of the Old Testament is for us to learn from, for our protection, but the reality is grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The fulfillment. Now keep this in mind. You think God's worked 6,000 years to remove the Christmas holiday? 
just because he, God can't overcome a pagan holiday? Here, here's the way I kind of look at it, and I'll, I'll move on right after this. I, I kind of look at it like this. In all the pagan holidays that happened back in that day, God just looked at him and said, well, I can do better than that. Amen. 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 Let's begin to remind everyone every year of Christmas and Easter, resurrection. Okay? Now, you look at that, God, that's wisdom. Because I asked this question a while ago. What would have happened if a hundred years ago they would have stopped celebrating Christmas? <laughs> Do you realize that even today they're trying to stamp out Christmas? Do you realize in some of the retail stores that you go in that the clerks are not allowed to say Merry Christmas? They're trying to take Christ out of Christmas. And what's a good thing about it, if anyone who wants to know the truth, anyone who wants to know the truth, begin to examine the purpose of Christmas, they will find the truth. Amen? Amen? Anyone who wants to know the truth. Now, there's a lot of people who don't want to know the truth. Well, that's made up of man. Well, restore, re, retail stores made up Christmas so they could sell gifts. No. No, God created Christmas. I truly believe that. To remind us every year of our Savior and the birth that he had. Now, here we go. Let's go another thing. Christ in Christmas is the only belief upon the face of the earth where God is coming down to reach out to man. In all other faiths, all other beliefs, if you look at it, you examine it, it's always man trying to be good enough for God to live for God. But in Christ, it was God reaching out to us to help us. Amen? Amen. He saw the mess we was in. And he's seen that he needed to intervene. Now we go back and look at our, our lives. The plan God had. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 1 real quick. And beginning with verse, I want to say 5. Uh, chapter 1, verse 5. And it's the beginning of the Christmas story. And it says it like this. And some people say, well, this is the beginning of the Christmas story. It's talking about John the Baptist. It is. It's the beginning. For 400 years, God was not speaking to man. For 400 years, until Luke, or until Matthew, or Mark, until the story of the beginning of Christ, God wasn't speaking anymore. But then here's God. He begins to speak again. And it begins in verse 5. It says, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. Now, We'll stop for a second. When you start seeing that there was in the days of Herod, that was the day and time this all happened. It's kind of like the history, history verse. This is trying to set us up. Anytime you read the Bible, you should always read the Bible and ask these questions. Who, what, where, when, and how? Okay. Same thing we learned in elementary. Whenever we had to do a book report on the newspaper. You know what I'm talking about for those of you that went to school anyway. Okay. You had, we had to do a re I know everyone went to school, right? No. No. <laughs> half of the congregation says, yeah. The other half says, no. We all had to learn. <laughs> and in that, we did a history report or a book report. We would ask those questions. Who, what, where, when, and how. When you're reading the Bible, slow down. Ask yourself those questions. Okay, I have so many people say, I don't understand the Bible. If you will slow down and begin to ask yourself those questions, you will begin to understand the Bible. And you've got to also understand this. The Bible is not a book you can read one time a week and get anything out of. The Bible is a book you want to read every single day. The Bible is a book that grows on the inside of you. 
The Bible is a book that will change you from the inside out. The Bible is a living book. It's not a, it's not a written book by mankind. It's a book written by God that as you plant it, it will grow and it will transform your life as you begin to read it every day. It doesn't say understand the Bible. It just says read the Bible, study to show yourself approved. Amen. And then ask yourself these questions about who, what, where, when, and how. So let's go on. That's the history verse. But then it goes on down about the people that God chose. And now Elizabeth and Zacharias were just two people that, that really, I believe, God kept track of their genealogies. Okay? Why? Because there had to be certain lineage of people because of God's written plan that brought about the will of God. Okay? Zacharias and Elizabeth was just going about their day. And what's amazing is what God done here for Zacharias. It goes on to say in verse 8. It says, And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing at the right hand of the altar of incense. Now, you got to understand, back in that day, if you go into the old temple, that there was a certain area that the priest would go in to burn incense in the presence of God. And they were the only ones allowed into, and I believe this was in the holies of holies, they were the only ones allowed, and actually they used to tie a rope into their ankle. Because if you went into the holies of holies and you had sin in your life, that it would kill you. All right? And they would have to drag you out. And I want you to know the priest had a tough job back then. Okay? Because it one slip and they're dead. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Because that changed a lot. At least now he shows us a little bit of mercy. <laughs> Thank God for that. But I mean, I've read some of the Old Testament. And boy, God was tough. Our father was, I mean, tough to live for. Okay? In the Old Testament because he had to prove we couldn't keep the law by ourselves. Amen. With the Holy Spirit, we can keep the law. Amen. With the Holy Spirit, we embrace it. The Word of God. And we let it live within us and then it produces God's will. But here's Zacharias going about his normal operation of life. That's one of the things that a lot of people need to see. God moves in your normal operation of life. Okay? And he does it a day by day. Day by day. Day by day. It's not any far-fetched thing that Zacharias was doing out of the ordinary life that Zachariah had. Some of you need to realize that God is operating right where you're at and he loves you so much he doesn't want to leave you there. His plan for you. Now this is the Father's plan in the Old Testament. Now you get into the plan with the Son of the purpose of the Son and, and what God began to do in reaching out to mankind. And then you have the plan of God working in our lives today in 2017. When you look at this, Zechariah was going about his day and all of a sudden it says in verse 11. Now let's go to ver no, verse 11. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing at the right hand of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for your prayers is heard. I don't know about you. On two, hand, on two sides here. One side I see an angel. Woo! Yeah. Okay, because this, he saw the angel. He didn't see the angel in the manifestation of a body of a man. He saw an angel. And if you look at the description of an angel, angels are some awesome creatures that are created by Almighty God. I mean, they got six wings. Man, they are huge. They're, they're not those little bitty naked babies. <laughs> I mean, you, you think, now there may be some little naked babies, but I'm just saying, they all have wings. But these angels are some bad dudes. Gabriel was the messenger. I mean, he was the one sent to give a message to Zacharias. Hey, Zacharias, an angel comes to you and says, Hey, John, your prayers have been heard. 
Zachariah is like, okay, I'm scared to death on one hand, but then I hear what the angel said. He said, fear not. Your prayers have been heard. Oh, yeah. This is getting good now. <laughs> what else did he say? Well, Zacharias went on to think about it. And what happened is Zacharias' own flesh got in the way. How can this be? If you really look at it, Zacharias didn't even really believe that the angel could accomplish what the angel said when he said, hey, your wife Elizabeth's going to have a baby. Zacharias probably thought, he didn't say it, but he probably thought, yeah, but she's old. Well, I'm just thinking that the Bible already said that she was old, well up there in age. Ladies, you know there's a certain age. You wouldn't want to have a baby past a certain age, right? Okay. But the, the angel told Zacharias, hey, Zacharias, the Lord has heard your prayer. Oh, I don't know about you. That'd make me rejoice. Yeah. Amen. But Zacharias didn't even believe it. The reason why I know that Zacharias didn't believe it because the angel went on to say, Zacharias... Because you don't believe what I'm saying to you, you're not going to be able to speak for nine months. Now, Elizabeth probably rejoiced. <laughs> I know some of your wives are thinking, could I be blessed like that? <laughs> Y'all ain't right. I mean, I mean Zacharias, Zacharias, I mean, he had to keep his mouth shut because God, he didn't believe God's plan. Now, for some of us, we went through some stuff because we didn't believe the report of the Lord. Do you believe the report of the Lord for your life? Oh, you do now. <laughs> I do now. <laughs> yeah, after I hit that brick wall going 90 mile an hour. <laughs> yeah, I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, no break, yeah. I, the reality is, is that, yeah, some of us, we didn't believe the report of the Lord until the Lord began to manifest in our life and draw us back into Him. Some of us, we, we don't quite comprehend the will of the Lord. But I want you to know the will of the Lord is good, not evil. It's to bless you, not to hurt you. It's to prosper you, not to destroy you. But some people say, well, why is the destruction in my life? Probably because we're not listening to the voice. We're not looking at the plan of God. You know, have you ever slowed down long enough to say, God, what is your plan for my life? I mean, I was, yesterday I was blessed to be able to go to the OU game, and, and it was a great time. And, and yeah, we won. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Hey, OSU won too. Arkansas lost. I'm sorry. I hope I don't have anyone here from Arkansas. Please don't be offended. I, I pray for you, brother. Yeah. You need a new coach. <laughs> but I was talking to a gentleman. I was thinking while we was there watching the game, I was looking around at all these college students and all this. I was thinking, I wonder what my life would have been like if I would have went a different path. But yet that wasn't the plan of God for me. I mean, the plan of God for me was to be put up for adoption when I was three days old into a family that I would have chosen a different family. No offense to the family I, that raised me. I thank God for them. I never went without a meal. I never went without clothes on my back. And I always had a rip over my head. Thank God. But I really would have wanted a different family to a certain degree. I mean, one of them wealthy ones that could have sent me to college and got me a doctorate degree. But it wasn't God's plan necessarily for my life at that time. Now, there's nothing wrong with an education. I just didn't get mine through that way. I got my education through hard knocks. Oh, I'm so glad some of y'all showed up. Yeah, praise God. Yeah. I'm so glad you're here today. Yeah, but I would have chose something just a little different. I mean, I wouldn't have mind encountering or experiencing college. My college was DOC. Disciples of Christ. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but what would have happened if, you know, we all think well, and speculate, 
Well, I wanted something else for my life, but yeah, God planned this. Well, I wanted something else for my life, but yeah, God planned this. Okay. Oh, was it God's will I went to prison? It wasn't as perfect will I went to prison. I chose to go there. It was not the perfect will for you to maybe go to prison or encounter drug addiction or alcoholism or encounter a loss of life or a, a heartache or a sorrow or a depression. It might not have been your will, but maybe it was God's will because he saw something in you that would give you the power to overcome that because he knew you wasn't going to be a, 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 a loser. You was going to be somebody. See, and, and when you begin to realize that God created you for a purpose and a reason, and you realize and you begin to receive his plan in your life, then everything begins to change, just like it did for Zechariah. Everything began to change because God heard his prayer like God's been hearing your prayer. My question is, is what are you playing for? What are you praying for? I started to say playing for it, didn't you? What are you praying for? Now, some of you need to stop and think. I know you're praying for a, a blessed holiday. You will begin to get that blessed holiday whenever you begin to be grateful for where you're at. You will begin to get that blessed holiday when you start embracing God's plan and not your plan. God's will and not your will. Because, see, we don't get it our way sometimes. We get it His way. But if we will be about the Father's business and allow the Father to begin to work in our lives and begin to allow the Spirit of God to live in our homes and live in our lives, then everything begins to transform. And although you may not have enough money for your family for your Christmas, but if God speaks to you and tells you to go bless someone else, you'll do it. Amen. And when you do it, God will bless you. Amen. See, sometimes we don't want to hear that voice. I, was, I shared in the first class with a, with a story that, uh, you know, I received a, a message, and some of you might have received that message, and it was about a, man, a young man who had went to a Bible study, and it just so happened that the Spirit of God began to deal with him. And the Spirit of God began to move in his life, and, and, and he didn't realize it was the Spirit of God, but he began to pray, God, I just want to hear your voice. I just want to hear your voice. I just, I want to be obedient to you, but how can I be obedient if I can't hear your voice? And all of a sudden this voice spoke up and said, go buy a gallon of milk. And he, he pushed down the voice. He said, I don't need a gallon of milk. I'm single. I don't have no babies. And all of a sudden he heard this voice again, go buy a gallon of milk. And he was like, God, I really want to be obedient for, to you, but I just can't hear your voice. And all of a sudden, the voice said, go buy a gallon of milk. He said, okay, God, I don't understand, but I'm going to go buy a gallon of milk. And he stopped at a convenience store. He went in, got a gallon of milk, and came back out, put it in his front seat, and said, okay, God, there's a gallon of milk. <laughs> and he started driving. Next thing you know, that same voice that said, buy a gallon of milk, said, turn right. And so he... He says, well, there ain't nothing down there for me to turn right, but I'll, out of obedience, I'll turn right. And he turns right, and he starts going down this road. And a few moments later, the voice said, turn left. He's like, God, what are you doing to me? I, I mean, I don't, I don't even know where I'm at. And the voice said, turn left. All right, out of obedience, I'll turn left. And he turned left, and he started going down this road, and all of a sudden, the voice said, stop. And he pulls over and stops. He's okay, God, why am I here? And the voice said, take the gallon of milk up to that house. And he said, I don't even know those people. They're going to think I'm crazy. I don't understand. There's not even lights on in the house. It's about midnight. So I'm going to knock on someone's stranger's door at midnight, and you want me to tell them this milk is for them? <laughs> Yeah? God, I don't understand. But okay, I just want to prove whether you're right or wrong. So he gets the guy in the milk and he goes up to the door and he knocks on the door. Here comes this man. Opens up the door. Look at him. So here, I brought you a guy in the milk. <laughs> and the guy looks at him and says, Honey! Here comes the honey. <laughs> Walking down the hall. Honey, this man just brought us a gallon of milk. Oh, 
Praise God. Glory to God. Honey, what's wrong? I just prayed for God to send an angel to bring us a gallon of milk because we spent all of our money on our bills and we didn't have no milk for the baby. Oh, that's good stuff. We don't understand. We don't understand how sometimes God will meet our needs and use different aspects or different situations or different circumstances. Whose will do you want more, yours or God's? God. Whose will would be better for you, yours or God's? God. His plan is greater than your plan. Amen. If you'll just yield him to him, he has a way. He has a way where there seems to be no way. He has a way where there seems to be no way. What is God's plan for you? And through these holiday seasons, let's look at God's plan, not our plan. You know, it's kind of like the lady, and I close with this, in Texas, who, who one time she was hungry. She was starving. She had no money. She had nothing to offer except prayer. And just so happens she lived right next to an atheist in her life. And every morning she would get up and start praying for God to meet her needs that she had no money and needed food. And, and, and all of a sudden this atheist says, well, I'll prove to her there is no God. And so he began to listen to her prayers and she began to talk, ask God to meet her needs and that, you know, she needed food for her house. And so the atheist just said, well, I, okay, I, I'm going to go buy this food for her and I'm going to put it on her doorstep and I'm going to prove to her there is no God. <laughs> You're like, Pastor, you ain't right. <laughs> I hear something going on here. Well, I believe my God's smarter than the devil. Right. I, believe, I believe my God is more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you would ever ask or think. And he'll use things that we didn't think could be used. Amen. And so this atheist went and bought some groceries and went and put them on the doorstep and and knocked on her door, and then he, he went over behind the bushes and was watching to see what her reaction was going to be. And she came out, and she looked up to God, and she just started praising God, having a Holy Ghost dance. Oh, glory to God. Thank you for answering my prayer, God. Thank you for my food. Thank you. Oh, it's just exactly what I wanted. Amen. And here comes the atheist. I told you there is no God. I did that. I went to the store. I paid for them food. And I left it on your doorstep. I told you there is no God. <laughs> and she stopped for a moment. And she looked at him. And she went back to praising God. Thank you. Thank you for my food. Thank you, God. Oh, thank you for meeting my needs. And thank you for letting the devil pay for it. <laughs> You ain't right, Pastor. Yes, I know, but it's still good. God's plan for you is better than your plan. And he will use the means that it takes to meet your needs. Or to bless you. Or to fulfill his will in your life. But you've got to be open to it. You begin to open up your heart when you begin to give him thanks. I begin to transform my life when I begin to thank him for going to prison. See? It wasn't the point of being punished. It was the point of I needed correcting. And he loved me so much, he stopped me to correct me. He loves you so much, he stopped you to correct you. To change your life. Now, it's your choice if you want to go back. It's your choice. God can't force you. But I promise you this. When you will get about seeking God's plan for your life. Every day. Every day. Every day. One day at a time. And you will begin to see his plan unfold for your life. And it's the best life you can ever live. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer.
Father God, we begin to exalt you and we begin to praise you. We thank you for your word today. Oh, the plan that you have for us is good and not evil. To prosper us, to bless us, to help us. In whatever we're going through, in any situation, any circumstance, Father, you know all things. And you know what's going on in the hearts and the lives of your people. And you know what we have need of. Father, we ask you right now to open up the eyes of our understanding. That we may see the plan that you have for us. To be the light of the world. To be the salt of the earth. To minister the good news about Jesus Christ. Father, as we go about our day and go about our week, we just ask you to empower each person, that your blessings would be upon each and every person. As we go from here, your favor would begin to shine upon them, that people will look at the blessings of God and want more of what they have. Amen. Father, we praise you today and we thank you for this word that's gone forth. And I just pray you meet every need that is here. That you bring healing where healing is needed. Father, that you set the captives free in their minds and in their hearts. I loose your anointing into their life right now. In the power of your Holy Spirit. With your eyes closed, I'd like everyone to tilt your heads up and look up into heaven. And take a nice deep breath and breathe in the life of God. I want everyone to repeat after me, Father God, Father God I, call you, I call into you in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. You, said, you said in your word, in your word. If, I ask, if I ask, I would receive. I would receive. If, I seek, if I seek, I would find. I would find. If I would knock on the door, knock on the, door the door would be open. Would be open. Today, Today, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I'm asking for your help. <laughs> I'm seeking your face. And the, and the knowledge of your grace. I'm knocking on the door, I'm knocking on the door. Of, salvation. of salvation. That you would help me. You would, you would rescue me. You would, rescue you would change me. Change from the inside out. From the inside out. Father, God, Father God. Thank you. Thank you. I, receive I receive. The sacrifice. The sacrifice that, Jesus made that Jesus made. On the cross. On the cross for my sin. For my sins. I proclaim the blood. To save, me, to save me, to heal me, to deliver me. I proclaim the blood of Jesus Christ to make me whole in your sight. Father God, I confess Jesus is Lord and I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. I ask you to fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. Indwell my heart. Guide me to fulfill your plan for my life. In all that I do, I surrender. In Jesus' name, I believe, I receive. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you get any hang out tonight? May God bless you, God keep you, and watch over you until we can meet again. If you need any special prayer, we will be up front to pray with you. Thank you. May God's blessings be with you in Jesus' name.